Treat. This is Len Duda. First of all, Len is one of the scientists at the Sandia National Laboratories in the satellite group, so that is very cool. Not only that, he is a demonstrator at Explora, but the coolest thing and the one that deserves the biggest round of applause right now is he is the chairman of the host committee for this entire Aztec conference. Yeah. So if things are running smoothly, if you're having a good time here in Albuquerque, you can thank that man. And right now, let's have a couple of demonstrations from Len Duda. Thanks, Eddie. Well, thanks, everybody. Uh, have you had a great conference so far? So I've been doing uh, demonstrations at Explorer for a long time, and I'm going to give you a sample of all of the chemistry-related demos that I'm doing. The first thing that I'm going to start off with is air pressure. Now, when I talk about air pressure, um, you know, you think about the air. All that air, the miles and miles of air, all of that is pushing down on us. And in science, anything that's pushing or pulling, we call that a force. When you have a force over some area, that's called a pressure. So one common way to measure pressure, in, at least in the US, is a pound per square inch. In Albuquerque, the air pressure is about 12 PSI because we're actually at an altitude of about a mile. If you went down to sea level, the pressure would be about 15 PSI. So I'm gonna kind of demonstrate um, how strong that air pressure is. So I'm gonna take my graduated cylinder and fill it up to the top with some water. And I'm taking one of these uh, really strong index cards, put it on top, turn it upside down. Whoops. You know, sometimes when you do demos, they don't always work. So you have lots of index cards in your pocket. And there it is, the air pressure is pushing up and it's holding, supporting the weight of the water that's in there. Now when I do this demo, I also say that we can use different types of containers as well. They don't have to be like graduated cylinders. So I'm gonna show you doing the same demo with this canning jar. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna fill it up to the very top with water. So it, it turns out, I mean, does it really matter what the shape of the container is or anything like that? Well, it turns out that it really doesn't matter that much. Put an index card on top of it. Turn it upside down. And it stays in there. But now with this different container, we can actually maybe see what happens if we try to pull the index card out. water stays in. Kind of amazing, isn't it? That's science. <laughs> Another area that I look at is uh, density. Now, one way to talk about density is to compare objects to uh, the density of water. So if they're denser than water, they're going to sink. If they're less dense than water, they're going to float. And so you can do all kinds of really neat experiments and demos by um, just putting objects in water and seeing whether or not they sink or float. And so we're going to do just a really quick demo looking at some cans of uh, regular Coke and Diet Coke. So I've got a tube over here filled with water. And the first thing we're going to do is going to put this uh, can of regular Coke in there. And usually whenever I do it, I always get wet, so I'm going to try to put my hand on top of it. And you see that uh, this is a really fast-moving experiment that you can see. That can of regular Coke is slowly sinking in that water. So what that means is that the can of regular Coke is denser than the water. So this is very, very similar to watching paint dry as it's slowly descending in there. So that's a can of regular Coke. Well, what happens if you try a can of Diet Coke? 
So if we put a can of Diet Coke in the tube and the water, Huh, it doesn't seem to be moving. If I take a stick, let's see what happens. Put it down there. Oh, look at that, it's floating back up to the surface. So the regular Coke eventually is going to get down to the bottom. Well, what's the difference? In regular Coke, there's a huge amount of sugar. That sugar changes the density of the water, makes it the water that's in that can denser than regular water. And so it's actually going to sink. In the Diet Coke, most of the water in the can is just water. There's a very small amount of artificial sweetener, and of course there's a little air bubble in there from the carbonation, and that little air bubble is the thing that makes this float. So that's a little sample of density of Coke and Diet Coke. <laughs> Another area that I do demos with is uh, looking at polymers. And polymers, of course, are different names of plastics. And polymers really depend upon how those molecules are connected into the very long chain. A lot of polymers that are, are used um, are a type of polymers called thermoplastics because they change their property at heat. So I've got a little tray over here, which is made out of a number six, which is polystyrene. So if I take my heat gun over here, and if I start heating it, you're going to see that um, eventually it's going to start kind of shrinking. These types of plastics or polymers actually have a memory where they actually remember their original shape. And as you slowly get them hot, it's going to go ahead and shrink and get smaller. But of course, as it shrinks, it actually maintains sort of the original configuration that it had. So they actually gave me less power for my heat gun because otherwise I would have probably turned off all the lights in the convention center. Well, we can do another kind of similar demo with a, a number two plastic, HDP, high density polyethylene. Right now, this is translucent. If I go ahead and start heating it, what you're going to observe is that where I'm heating it with this heat gun, it's going to become clear. It's going to become transparent. And so what we're actually doing is we're changing the structure, the way those long molecules in that polymer are ordered. We're changing it from sort of a more crystalline structure into a more glassy or amorphous structure. And with that different types of structure, you can see that now it's more clear, but it also changes its properties because originally um, when it was translucent, it was kind of uh, fairly hard and stiff, but now it becomes more flexible. And as you see that as it cools down, it changes back into that uh, original uh, translucent. Thank you very much.